everyone, what's up? This is Simon. Welcome to the new vlog episode and this week we're gonna talk about something that's more on the personal level I would say. So we're gonna talk about the independent developer. Basically in my eyes in the world there are like two types of developer. The one is having like a corporate job or a regular job, going to work with the team, perhaps working remote um, and doing a thing for the company. Fix it or you're fired. On the other side, there are the freelance developers that at some point became independent uh, and do client work for different clients all the time. And then there's like a third category or basically category that contains a lot of mixed uh, developers which I fall into. Hey everyone what's up this is Simon from DevDactic. So this is the category of independent developers that don't really fit into any of the boxes that are available. I don't have any job title. I don't know actually what I'm doing. This is the key for becoming successful but I will share with you how it is to be an independent developer. <laughs> Before we completely dive into today's topic, one question, um, because I know not all of you are listening until the end. We got a community of more than 20,000 followers here on YouTube already, more than 5,000 on Instagram and on the other platforms as well. I think it is definitely time to give our community a regular solid name. I have a few ideas, but I would like to get your input. Please share below this video right now the first thing that comes to your mind how we should call ourselves. This could be like the Grim Army, something related to Ionic development, anything that comes to your mind. Uh, I'm really looking forward to all your recommendations and the best one will be our official name. So what do I actually do as an independent developer? Basically I grew into this position uh, after transitioning from being a regular developer into uh, going full-time with my blog and the Ionic Academy. Besides that, I also work on freelancing project. Over the last weeks, we talked a lot about different clients and projects and stuff like this. And then, of course, I got other projects going on that I want to show you in a second. My income is basically created from various different sources. And that's also, um, let me show you. I don't know if I've shown this before to you. This is my uh, personal winner's Bible. Uh, then I go through every morning and one of the things that I am basically chasing after is to be the founder of multiple different companies. I want to create different income streams, which I already have from YouTube ads, which are um, nothing you should uh, aim for. Even with 20,000 followers, the ads are a big laugh. Now then I got the income from the members of the Ionic Academy and I also uh, do client work from time to time, basically every week, like a day or two days. And then I also got my own project. There's never any security as an independent developer. You're dependent on a lot of people paying you for services that you provide, whatever you're good in. But this also brings the flexibility of doing other things during the day, working on more than just tickets and the project and becoming creative, working uh, like this on videos, um, on social media, on marketing. And because this life can be really chaotic and unstructured, um, I also want to show you how I approach my weeks. So this year is basically my current week. Um, as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> As you can see, I got a lot of things to do. Uh, on Tuesday, I want to create... Um, uh, actually, I was even in the wrong week, but still, this week looks pretty much the same. Um, so, on Tuesday, I got a post scheduled, and on Friday morning, I called my brother. Well, I'm not a huge fan of calendars. Um, I tried them out to block my time, um, and I know for some people this works, but our uh, last year has been very chaotic with the baby at home so I tried to have the blocks of time and then I couldn't work in those blocks and everything was messed up so um, I'm really um, stepping away from that and you see also that I can basically plan all the things whatever I want to do during those days and that's really um, something that's not for everyone you have to be highly self-disciplined. You got to bring up the motivation every morning to work on what's really important. Um, and I switched away from this calendar to uh, a to-do list. So this year represents a lot more my current week. I used to do is 
Um, I also wanted to do a tools that I use every day episode, perhaps in the upcoming weeks. My days are structured with the highest important tasks. I marked them as red. I got a yellow tasks with a record vlog. Um, I also got funny things that I don't really schedule with the time. And I also became better about estimating uh, the times for my tasks. So I try to aim for about four to seven hours per day. Last week I tracked my time and I went to, I think a bit more than 30 hours. So if you have a regular job, I guess you would laugh about that time, but this is really focused time that I work on. And that's sometimes a lot more than the 40 hours I did previously in an office. So still every Sunday I got this blank sheet basically and then I got to um, work on a few things. I got a few recurring tasks as you see every Monday recording a vlog. Every day I got like a shutdown work task which is like the end of my day. Uh, every Tuesday I got to edit the vlog. I got to schedule my newsletter. Uh, and then on Friday I also got the regular task of recording welcomes for my members, answering YouTube, answering emails, scheduling a summary. And on Sunday, my week basically begins with the planning uh, and the weekly review. As I said, you really need to bring up a lot of self-discipline as an independent developer to work really on what's important. I could also work on getting into different frameworks, watching YouTube all the time and doing things that really don't matter at all. So um, that's a quality that you need to have. But you know, one of the good things is I can drive to the gym whenever I want during the day. Also, what you can see, I don't schedule anything for Saturday and Sunday, which are Samstag and Sonntag in Germany. So you learned something again. Um, because I, I really enjoy having a Friday and then saying, yay, it's weekend. Um, and I wanted to preserve this feeling from the regular job into this now, I think, two and a half years uh, time that I work for myself. You know, if you're working as a regular job or perhaps you're going to university, Friday is always kind of special feeling in the air. The weekend is upcoming. You meet with friends. You got uh, other activities going on. Um, there's football going on. So Dortmund just won the first game of the season. Great start so far. That's just something I try to aim for. Although I know I limit the numbers I work on, it's still important to like shut down everything during the weekend. Also, I wanted to tell you about one of the latest projects that I currently got going on, which is a tool to create preview images for the App Store based on screenshots you take. So that's something uh, I took time for it to develop. Um, it will come out very likely once this video is out, so it will be available at appstorekit.com. Uh, we got an editor where you can add screenshots for different sizes. In the end, export everything, pay for it, and then you will get all the screens that you created with different fonts, colors, and device positions. So this is something that you're responsible for if you're an independent developer. Um, even if you got something going on, like I got with the Academy, I'm still looking forward to what's in two years, what's in five years, what's in 10 years, and try to come up with products that will generate an income then. So even if this tool is just doing like, I don't know, a few hundred dollars a month, that would be super awesome because then I would move on to the next one and I would create another tool that would maybe create uh, a bit more or what scale this. So there are really a lot of choices when you're an independent developer. So why do I share all of this? Basically because I know it was a dream to have this position I currently have when I was younger. I wanna give you a perspective on how it looks like. Over the years I learned that this is actually not for everyone. So as a developer I was also super happy, uh, sometimes also super excited with the team I was working on. I really enjoyed um, working on different projects with them, going to work, just having this team of members. But I wanted to uh, have more freedom, more flexibility in my days. Uh, I want to work on what I think is really important and not what somebody else is telling me is important. Their pros and their cons. So we got the flexibility on the one hand, the creativity, um, using all your different skills that you got um, to make an income and just the satisfaction that you get from earning your own money basically. But on the other hand, this is really something that's tricky. You got to bring up a lot of motivation. Uh, you're completely responsible for basically everything once the server breaks down or if a client leaves That's all your responsibility. Of course the income part which is always tricky and Maybe for most of you one of the things that lets you say ah, maybe that's not for me This is really living with the insecurity every day 
And finally, um, if you're a social person, it can be really tough. So I sit here about 95% of the time alone in front of my laptop. I talk into the camera or this camera, maybe listen to a podcast or go to the gym, but I'm basically alone most of the time, which I actually enjoy. If you now say, how do I become an independent developer? Um, this might be something for me. I got two advices for you. First one is to be more proactive and find time to put in additional work. This might be before you go to university or school, maybe on the train, maybe after work, put in additional work. Get into a topic that you're good at, um, perhaps create a blog around it. That was my strategy back then. But there are a lot of other ways like creating a channel here, being on social media and just creating something um, that you are really good at. My second advice is to have some sort of role model that you follow. For me back then this was Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income. He's really a great guy and he started this idea in, uh, in my brain to build something like passive income and generating additional income. Pick something, follow podcasts and read articles, just get into the topic and you will see that there's really a lot of things that are possible these days. And whatever you do, Keep that goal in your mind uh, of becoming an independent developer, get into the mindset and just work towards that goal. It can take months, it can take years, but if you pursue it, it is definitely possible. I hope you enjoyed this a bit different vlog today about behind the scenes. If you want to know more about my journey and how everything came together, just let me know below. Of course, also make sure to share your idea about how we want to name our community, the Simon Army, the Grimms, I don't know. And also, if you are motivated about that topic this week, simply get started. Read a few articles, get into the mindset, maybe start something and then everything will work out in the end. Just trust the process. I hope you have a great week. Next week I'll be on vacation. I think there will be no vlog because last time um, that should work uh, while traveling. Well, yeah, last time I said there will be a travel vlog and there was no vlog. So this time I will just say there will no be no vlog next week. And then I will catch you in two weeks and of course inside our tutorial next week. Have a great week as always and happy coding, Simon.